Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to give an update on my portfolio. Right now my portfolio is worth $102,083.99. In the past year I am up $27,783.97. Year to date for the year 2024, I'm currently up $11,000. $158.89 On Friday, it was relatively flat. I only lost $97.17 during the day. After hours, I am up $273.03. So mostly not really up a lot, not really down a lot, mostly just flat. Let's go over my positions. As you notice, if you've been watching my portfolio updates, there's been a lot of changes in my portfolio. I'll go over those later. For my options, I'm selling Amazon $195 covered calls. These expire July 26. My total return $135.99. I'm selling PayPal $65 covered calls. These expire July 26. My total return $124. I'm selling Disney $110 covered calls. These expire August 2nd. My total return $207. I'm selling Google $210 covered calls. These expire December 20th. My total return $494. I have McDonald's, $210, $200 with credit spreads. These expired December 20th. My total return, $320. For my stocks, I have 300 shares of Amazon. Amazon is at $183.99. My average cost, $98.95. My total return, $25,000. $515.83 I have 6,000 shares of SoFi SoFi is at $7.45 My average cost $5.62 My total return $10,960.80 I have 300 shares of Disney Disney is at $95.73 my average cost $60. My total return $10,719. I have 100 shares of Google. Google is at $178.78. My average cost $142.48. My total return $3,630. I have 200 shares of PayPal. PayPal is at $59.45. My average cost, $57.70. My total return, $350. This is a margin account. My margin total is $107,385.93. My margin used is $55,144.13. My options collateral is $10,000. This leaves me with $42,241.80 in buying power. My margin status is low risk. My buffer is $51,207.93. This is how much money I can lose before I get margin called. My annual interest rate is 6.55%. The daily interest that I'm paying is $15.89 and I am borrowing $1,000 interest-free. So I'm at $102,000 now, and for the most part, I've been holding up really well in terms of having my portfolio value stay above 100K. So in the past, it's dipped down right below 100K right after it hits it, but in this case, it's been holding steadily above that mark. Now for my options, there are three positions that expired 
on Friday. One of them being Starbucks. I had some shares of Starbucks and I chose a strike price of $76. I used to have it at an $80 strike price and I should have just kept it there because what happened was, um, yeah, I, I rolled it out to, yeah, as you can see, I bought back my calls of Starbucks at $80 strike price and replaced it with selling covered calls at the $76 strike price. And unfortunately, this means I lost out on money. As you can see, out of nowhere on Friday, it went from below $76, which is the strike price I chose, to above $76. It almost hit like $80 per share, which if I had kept it at the strike price of $80 like I had originally, I would have actually made more money. And this is the downside of covered calls is that when the stock goes way above the strike price that you choose, you could actually end up missing out on gains. You could actually end up on, you know, making less money than you should have if you had not had the covered call in the first place or if you chose a higher strike price rather than a lower one. So I chose a strike price of $76 and it was going well. It was staying below $76, which is kind of what I wanted, but then it just blasted right through it to $79. Um, and when this happens, this means I lost out on money. I think I had a couple hundred shares, so I lost out on couple hundred dollars worth of gains um, if I had chosen uh, an $80 strike price and just left it there but at the last minute I chose to change it to $76 and by doing so I lost out on money covered calls can be tricky sometimes now there's another one that expired which is SoFi SoFi I believe I chose a strike price of $8 and SoFi actually did stay below the $8 strike price. It's at $7.45. So that worked out, uh, you know, just fine. And I got to keep my shares as well. All I did was collect the premium. Now, what do I want to do moving forward? Well, we'll see. They do report pretty soon. July 30th, that's coming up in eight days from now. Um, Maybe I'll just wait to see how they do during their earnings and then after the report then I'll decide if I want to do more covered calls, if I want to do spreads, we'll see. So maybe because they're reporting so soon, I might want to just wait it out or if I do covered calls, I'll choose a strike price that's like way, way high so that it'll just be seen as some extra money but not really anything that's I think will realistically hit like I don't think SoFi will hit like you know $12 after earnings so maybe I'll pick something super high like that but that's my plan for now so yeah covered call roll um, I ended up with the, the $8 strike price in the end um, but yeah it, it worked out it stayed below the $8 strike price that I chose the last one, uh, what was it? I completely forgot, but it got, oh yes, that's right, Robinhood. Now this one, I chose a strike price way above, uh, sorry, way below the current price. I had a strike price of $18 and Robinhood was at, as you can see, it's at $23. So um, I knew ahead of time that my shares of Robinhood would get called away and I just did it for the premium, which honestly, it was like 7% in two months, which is more than enough uh, for my needs anyway. So I'm happy with that. I wasn't too mad about that because I kind of got what I intended to get going into it, which is just my 7% return in two months. Um, so that's fine. Now, that's another example too, though, of losing out on money than if I had not had the cover call at all, like if Robinhood stayed below $18 per share, like if it stayed at like $17.50 or something, that would have 
been great for me because I wouldn't have lost out on lots of money. However, as you can see, it was like at 16 something, but then now it's way above that. It's at 23. So um, if I had not had covers of calls at all, I would have actually made thousands of dollars more than I would have if I had not, you know, done those covered calls. Uh, but unfortunately, I chose a strike price of like $18 for my covered calls. Actually, even before that, I had an even lower strike price. What was it, like 16 or something? Uh, yeah, covered call roll. Yeah, I had a strike price of $16 before I rolled to the $18 strike price. So I chose a strike price initially very low um, compared to the price it is now, which is 23. So if I had just bought shares of Robinhood and not done any covered calls at all, I actually would have ended up making thousands of dollars of more money. And like I said, this is an example of how covered calls can actually work against you, right? That you can actually miss out on gains by doing covered calls. Um, if you choose a strike price and then the stock price goes way above that, you know, you lose out on money. So that's the downside of covered calls. And I kind of knew it going into it anyways. Like I, I'm, I know what covered calls are and how they work. So I, I kind of knew the risk going into it. And uh, that's what happened. I lost out on money. Now, did I lose money? Not necessarily because I still gained some money. You know, the stock price still went up and I gained the premium as well. So I, I, I did make some money, but not as much money as I would have if I had not done the covered calls at all. So it is what it is. There's pros and cons to any given strategy, to be honest. Um, but yeah, that's how things have turned out. Now, my portfolio has three less positions than it used to. I have to decide what to do now. Um, what I'm thinking, like I said, because earnings are coming up in general for a lot of companies, I might just wait for earnings and see what the results are and then decide afterwards what I want to do. So yeah, SoFi is reporting on the 30th. I believe some other ones are reporting in August. Let's see what Amazon is doing. It's going to report on August 1st. So that's soon too. August 1st is coming up. So a lot of companies are reporting soon. I might just wait to see how they do, how they do during earnings and then decide from there. Um, usually during earnings reports, there's a huge move in either direction. It, if it, if a stock does well, it might move up like, you know, several percents, like 10%, 5%, whatever it is, whatever it is, you know, usually, um, you know, there's, there's, there's a big move around earnings reports either up or down, you know, either way, there's a huge move upwards, downwards, whatever it may be. Um, so I think I might just wait for it. I'll wait and see how different companies are reporting, uh, including the ones that I already have in my portfolio. And then I will decide what to do from there. Now, my buying power, as you can see, I have $42,000 in buying power now, which is a lot. Um, even though this is a margin account, uh, it still is a lot of buying power to work with. Um, but yeah, I might just hold on to that and see how different companies report. And then I'll put this $42,000 to use. All right. That's pretty much it for this portfolio update. I know it's a lot of information to go through, but uh, that's where I'm at right now. And I'll keep on making more updates in the future to let you guys know what new positions I enter. If I get rid of any positions, if any stocks go up by a lot, down by a lot, whatever it is, I'll keep on making updates to let you guys know what's going on. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. Uh, if you guys want to see more and you guys like this type of content, please make sure to like and subscribe and I'll keep on making more of these videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.